Tired of your Chamberlain or LiftMaster garage door opener acting a fool? Is it stopping randomly while it travels up or down? Then it might be time to replace your travel module. That's right, not your motor, your travel module. Let's party. Chamberlain garage door openers are great retail openers, but they tend to fail in peculiar ways. For example, this Chamberlain B550 garage door opener was not closing properly. The homeowner was ready to replace this opener because he thought the motor was no longer good. However, after troubleshooting, we found that it was the travel module that was the issue. Now, before you suit up to make this repair, you will need some tools, specifically a one quarter magnetic nut driver or socket driver, because who wants to lose screws while they're making a repair to the garage door opener? Now, because safety is a priority, close the garage door and shut off or unplug the electrical power to the garage door opener. At the same time, you wanna disconnect the battery backup. We don't want any shocking surprises. Now in this video, I know the garage door is open and that's perfectly fine. I needed it more for light, but in essence, you do want to make sure that the door is closed. So that way there's no problems in the event the garage door opener automatically does something if you do not unplug it and it moves the door down or up it's just for safety reasons. From here, you can remove the light lens and the cover to the garage door opener. Once the garage door opener is exposed, you can disconnect the wire harness and the E-clip to the travel module. Now gently press on the four tabs of the travel module to release it from the motor bracket. It's almost like disarming a bomb, just as fun, but not as dangerous. Now you can give that old travel module the boot, Basically, these travel modules are no longer good. They're no longer useful. So in other words, you can pretty much dispose of it. You can put it in the trash. Of course, if you want to be responsible, you can take it to a e-waste location where they can dispose of it. Nevertheless, they're not interchangeable or I would say repairable so that you can interchange them or replace them on other garage door openers. They're basically just one and done. From here, you can snap on the new travel module to the motor bracket and you want to snap carefully those four tabs because again, if you're not gentle, if you're not careful, you could break them and that travel module won't set properly, thus creating more problems when you use the garage door opener. Then from here, you'll basically reverse engineer. You're gonna put the E-clip on, you're gonna reconnect the wire harness, you're gonna basically put the cover onto the garage door opener, and you're going to put the light lens on, and basically, at this point, you're done with the travel module portion of the repair. Now you'll need to pass on to the next step, which is programming the garage door opener. Now by programming the garage door opener, we will need to program the travel limits first. This is basically teaching the garage door opener where to stop once it opens and close. Now here's a very important note. When messing with the travel limits, it can affect the safety to the garage door opener. So pay close attention when you're doing this process because you wanna make sure that your garage door has enough lift, enough stretch, enough height so that it can clear whatever vehicle that you're parking in the garage. From here, you'll use the fancy buttons to the garage door opener to tell the door when to stop. First, hold the adjustment button until the up button flashes. Second, press and hold the up button until the door reaches the desired up position. And again, you want to make sure that it reaches or clears the opening of the garage so that way your vehicle does not nick or hit the garage door section. Next, press and release the adjustment button in the middle to save the setting. Next, you're gonna repeat the steps, but for the down position. You will hold the down arrow for the garage door travel to close. Once the garage door closes at the desired position, you can pretty much make any adjustments to make sure that it's not pressing too hard up against the door. Finally, press the middle button again to make sure that the program is set. At this point, the open and close limit settings have only been programmed. The next step is to program the four settings. Now, depending on what type of Chamberlain or LiftMaster garage door opener you have, programming the four settings may vary. Therefore, you do wanna make sure that you read the instructions because there are different types of buttons to each garage door opener brand and model in order to adjust those settings. Specifically, if you have the up and down arrows, that process will be pretty easy. On the older Chamberlain and LiftMasters, you were able to press that middle rectangular button to get into the program settings. 
And after following the steps on the open and close, in most cases, you simply press the up button to set the force limit opening, and then hit the middle button once more. Then you would hit the down arrow to allow the force settings for the close. On the new models, this happens automatically. So again, I wanna repeat that programming the force settings will vary from Chamberlain to LiftMaster garage door opener model. Garage door accidents or issues like the one in this video happen on a daily basis. One of the reasons why they happen so often is because of the photo safety eyes or the safety reversing sensors. These OEM sensors are fundamentally flawed. Normal garage door sensors are installed only six inches above the floor on the garage door tracks. At that placement, they can't defend against open trunks, protruding bumpers, or high trailer hitches. That's why we recommend Infinity Shield. Infinity Shield is the next level garage door safety reversing sensor. Their sensor covers the entire spectrum of the garage door opening. It's literally an infinite shield of protection that can detect any obstruction. Infinity Shield can provide you protection from your garage door damaging your car. The best part, it can be installed in minutes. The setup is easy for pros and even DIYers. Thus, if you're ready to upgrade your garage door safety sensor needs, then visit the link below and a big thanks to Infinity Shield for sponsoring this video. But if you can get through the repair process of the travel module, then I don't think you're gonna have any trouble programming and setting the force limits. That process is usually relatively easy and with the instructions that come with the travel module, you should not have any problem getting any support or even talking with LiftMaster or Chamberlain about programming those settings to make sure that your garage door opener is working safe and sound. Now the Chamberlain model in this video happens to be an AC garage door opener. But for context, we're gonna show you now the DC motors that LiftMaster is utilizing and right there, we have the travel module. So just for comparison, keep in mind that if your garage door opener is a DC opener and not an AC opener, like the one you see in this video, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get the right travel module. This travel module connects in a different way and it's clearly a lot smaller for the footprint of this specific motor. And again, keeping this in mind will help you to know what parts to get when you are investigating Chamberlain's website to purchase the travel module and even the DC motor system. Now we have a number of videos that cover garage door openers and a number of garage door repairs. So let's keep this party going. Check out one of these videos right here. As always, I wanna thank y'all for partying with me. Y'all stay safe.